I'm not a great athlete, but I think I'm a good football player. I've played for a long time, and I know a lot about the game. And uh, because I've been around for a long time now, you know, my football instincts are, are, are pretty good. And I try to be in the right place at the right time. Steve Largent. Any list of great receivers you put together, regardless of era, should have Steve Largent on it. Nobody told this guy that he couldn't catch the ball the way he did. I like Jim Zorn and Steve Largent. They were Shaw. Right, Jimmy. You forgot to tell him about my hands. And he's got great hands. <laughs> It's amazing how he could just snatch the ball out of the air. Juggles the end zone, touchdown, Seahawks! Taking nothing away from Odell Beckham. That was an amazing catch you made last season. He made first down. I mean, you really saw the ball hit the turf. If Largent had worn the gloves they wear today, he would have caught with one finger. Steve Largent. I idolized him. In 1976, the National Football League comes to the Great Pacific. Seattle, we wish the Seahawks a long tenure in the National Football League. But in 1976, the Houston Oilers drafted Largent in the fourth round, where he was soon traded to Seattle for an eighth round pick. At that point in time, a lot of my self-worth, self-esteem was built upon or based upon uh, my ability as a football player. And so to have someone say, you're not good enough, uh, it was really a crushing blow to me. I was going to fix dinner, and I wanted him to come out. And Steve said, well, that'll be great, but uh, I need to get home and get to bed early. I've got to catch a plane in the morning. And I said, oh, where are you going? He says, I'm going to Seattle. He said, but I'm only going to take a few things, because I may not be there long. Well, you know the rest of the story. That was an expansion team in 1976. Those early teams were really not very good teams. They were reject teams in a lot of ways. Two of these cast-offs came together that summer in Seattle. Largent, who had been cut by Houston, joined Zorn, who had been released by Dallas, to form a potent passing combination for a fledgling franchise. Largent became one of the NFL's greatest players of his era immediately. After spending his rookie year in Houston, he moved it to the Seattle Seahawks. 1976, we get the Seahawks. Usually you have this stud that everybody roots for, but we don't get that big stud. We get Steve Largent. You talk to anybody associated with the Houston Oilers at that time, and they'll probably admit that's the greatest mistake they ever made. But if this list was based on appearance, you'd think he'd be better at filing tax returns than catching post patterns. He's not real big and he's not real fast. And if you were watching them practice that first day. What would you say Steve's best assets are as a receiver? Best asset is he understands the game. And that helps me out a lot because he makes adjustments being as smart as he is. On go. Ready? Great. You would not pick him out of the line to even make the team, let alone become the receiver he was. In retrospect, his trade to the expansion Seahawks for an eight-round draft pick may be football's equivalent of buying Manhattan for $24. But back in the early years, Largent had to fight the preconceived notions of what it took to be a great receiver. As people said, well, he's kind of short, and he's not fast enough, and this and that. And I think uh, it's uh, that ability to want to prove people wrong and his fear of not uh, meeting his own expectations, which are very high. If you put him in the NFL's computer, he fails. If you put him in the NFL's computer, he fails. I don't really fit into the mold of your typical wide receiver. I'm not tall. I'm not particularly fast. When people talk about the great receivers in football, they don't mention Largent to me nearly often enough. Largent's got it. Touchdown, Seahawks. Largent also has the reputation of being consistently slow-footed. He was labeled as a slow white guy. A sensational catch by Steve Largent. People don't think he's fast, but he's fast. He caught that ball right on his fingertips while he was diving. A lot of people have tagged me that a lot, and uh, 
You know, I think the older I've gotten, the more I've lived up to their expectations. I think I'm slowing down a bit. But, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I'm still able to move around the football field fairly well and separate from people. He's faster than what people think. He has a lot of things going for him, and I think one thing going for him that's great is that everyone says he doesn't have great speed. <laughs> so when you go into the game, you think, well, you know, he doesn't have great speed. I'm going to kind of relax and just stay close. But he comes off the line, and he, he really has a great tempo, and he, he can stop and change direction and speed up so quickly that he really throws defensive backs for a loss a lot of times. The end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks to Largent. I don't think he could outrun me, and I can't run very fast. But the thing is, he'll run a slant pattern. He'll run it four different ways. Uh, what that really means is just being consistent in what you do on the football field, that your routes are consistent. I mean, he embarrassed people with his route running. Your ability to be a great athlete and your ability to be a, a football player are two different things. And I, I think he was a tremendous football player. Catch the ball consistently. Steve Largent has the hands of a surgeon, the mind of a technician, and the body control of a contortionist. Steve Largent owns the finest pair of hands in football. They would always say that the one thing that Largent can do well is catch the ball. I may not have been the fastest guy, run deep routes or anything like that, but I would catch the ball if it was thrown near me. A lot of players depend on the five gloves to keep the ball in their hands, so they don't really know how to catch. You know, a lot of people, they have to look the football into their hands. Steve can look at, look at the football and then turn the other way and catch on the other side of his body like nobody else can. Steve Largent never wore gloves. And he was the best pass catching receiver that I ever played with or against. He's got great concentration, great hands, and he has an intense desire to want to catch the football, and he's a very competitive person. Was Yoda's power to channel the force? Uh, that you're doing your proper assignment consistently. What I would say is keep your eye on the tip of the ball. That became my mantra. The thing that I always noticed about him was how open he got. Largent wide open at the 10, he's got it! Touchdown, Seahawks! Narrowing the focus of your concentration so that you're not watching a football, you're watching a tip of a football. The time that uh, I really hit my hot button is once we get inside the opponent's 30-yard line, once we get down and uh, we're within easy striking distance. That's when things really get exciting right then because you can make big plays and get the ball in the end zone, and, and that's the fun part of playing football. He scored a touchdown. The end zone to Larkin, touchdown Seahawks! For Larkin, he's in the clear, he makes the grab, touchdown Seahawks! He could set up guys and just humiliate them. Throws to him in the corner of the end zone, touchdown Seahawks! It really was effective. It was immensely helpful. The right time for Steve Largent is when a clutch reception is needed. The right place is usually the end zone. Largent possesses the intense concentration of a Zen master, and he could probably snatch a buzzing fly out of the air with chopsticks. How did Steve Largent get so wide open? He doesn't look real fast. Dedication and discipline, rather than size and speed, have made Steve Largent a star. It's like one of the smallest guys on the field. How does this guy always get open? And how is he always catching the ball over somebody that's bigger than him? Largent seems unbound by the rules of gravity. He dives forward, he sails upward. And I know a lot about the game, and because I've been around for a long time now, you know, my football instincts are pretty good. He will mesmerize you and just flat turn you around. There's no way you can cover him if you look in his face or at his shoulders. You have to know that every game we go into, they're double covering him or keen on him on certain situations. And when he comes up with the catch, you just realize how great he is. It's easy to appreciate Largent's talents in retrospect. Dorn, play fake, back to pass. Looks, he sets up, he throws for the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks! Dorn dropping back to pass. Looks, he throws down the right side for Largent. He's in the clear. He makes the grab. Touchdown, Seahawks! Largent met those expectations and earned all rookie team honors by finishing sixth among NFL receivers. And together with quarterback Jim Zorn, an off-field friendship and on-field chemistry blossomed. Where Zorn's mobility and Largent's intuition 
help turn the Seahawks into contenders. Their third year as a team in Seattle, we were 9-7, and seven, almost made the playoffs, and it was primarily due to Jimmy and Steve and the success that they had and as good a fancy combination as they were. Large it made the grab! Jim was taught, you know, drop back. If you got to play, make it. But if you don't, scramble around, try to make something happen. Soren throws the bomb deep down the right side. Large and wide open at the 10. He's got it. Touchdown, Seahawks. Steve had the ability to know when a protection was breaking down. If the ball wasn't on him, he knew something was wrong, and he would just look. We just had a sense of what one another was going to do before it even happened. And I think that had to do with uh, just the fact that we spent so much time together on the field and off. So close of friends were Zorn and Largent, they even carpooled to work together, but in a not-so-typical automobile. Jim was very proud of uh, his Volkswagen. He had it for a long, long time. Uh, and he took some perverse pride in uh, being able to drive that Volkswagen to the game. Get out of the way! I really liked my Volkswagen. Uh, I thought it was really fast because, you know, I, I, I like to feel like I'm racing around. Well, you can't really race around in a Volkswagen, but it sounds like you are. Jim Zorn along with Steve Largent, they were the, the face and the voice of the franchise in those early days when the, the area was just giddy to have an NFL franchise. The soaring popularity of this clean-cut combination led to an utterly endless flow of endorsements. <laughs> they did do milk commercials. Um, for the dairy farmers, tell us about this. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know how it came about, but uh, it was actually very clever. I, I still can sing the song, can you? Uh, I can sing it, but I'm not going to sing it on the air. We sang on them, too. Well, that's why we only did a few. Show your stuff and drink milk. Show your stuff and drink milk. Uh, I hope it wasn't more than one. I think it may have been. It wasn't just one commercial, as you know. It was two. You'll get lots of da 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 da, -da. He has lots of calcium, protein and vitamin. They were not exactly on the nightlife scene in Seattle. But uh, every um, ice cream shop opening, they were there. Burst the beats. It starts now. It starts now. Yes. Life's a bitch and I got a crush, huh? Early life. Yes, who hot is us, huh? On the spot cash, we don't do the call loans. You send your best, I bury them like a dog bone. I ain't stressing Fetty, I'm the best already. Next level, that phantom came with a secretary. Got bigger though, so I can grandstand. I am bigger low. Yeah, bam, bam. It's Ant Man, government is Tom Fist. When it's money on the line, shit, my palms itch. This is what they waiting for. Fit me like the third rail. That's word to I, they gon' hit me like some church bells. Little niggas, your bread ain't grown. Poppy fucking with your boy like reggae tone. Find your body, but your fucking head ain't on. Gotta find it. Remix, get reminded. Hot one, hot two, y'all know the say it. Pay me, fuck you. Pay me, fuck you. Pay me, fuck you. Yeah. See, they said it wouldn't last. I was spitting. They still threw my demo in the trash. Am I living? Nah, dog, not just cause your heart beating. We do it for the projects. That was our reason. And it still is, even when the struggle lingers. At the McDonald's where they found rich brother finger. Rest in peace to the fallen soldiers, my inspiration. Reason I got more airs than ventilation. Can't stop like an ad lib from Sean Combs. Got rocks, you lose weight like Star Jones. Now the feds got bugs on the car phone. Cause my heart's shown that I'm star prone. Write dark poems. Shit, my life's hard. It's no jokes. Wanna know how I got the scars? Half broke, fuck you. Got the right to charge. Great name for that coke, call it nice massage. Hot one, hot two. Y'all know the saying. Pay me, fuck you. Largent is down after taking that hard shot to the head by Harden. I'd seen him take a lot of hits. That one was different. Largent is down after taking that hard shot to the head by Harden. And boy, his head just snapped right back. Largent's 1988 season opened with a nasty blow from Denver's Mike Harden. Steve Largent took a mean, mean look. And Steve Largent right now is 
laying on his back. His eyes are still closed. I think he's out. I was watching on TV with my mom. He got knocked unconscious. His eyes are still closed. I think he's out on the field. Mike Harden broke a couple of his teeth off. Wicked. Cheap shot, in my estimation. It was a 12-yard post route in Denver. Dave Craig didn't look off the safety. Craig on a play fake to Warner, back to pass. That was one of the more violent collisions I've seen. Rills went up the right side. It hit me right in the hands, and Mike Harden hit me right in the face with his forearm. I remember being scared. And I was out before I hit the ground. And Steve Largent right now is laying on his back at the 40-yard line. And I think we were I think we were pretty concerned. He was out for five minutes. The league fined Mike Harden for it. But Steve bided his time, and 14 weeks later, Largent got even. You could not write it up any better. Here is the guy. He knocked you out a few weeks ago. Neither logic nor reason can explain what happened next. Mike Harden intercepts a pass. You're watching this play. In comes this streak, and it's Steve Largent. to the 20, he's on his feet, and Floyd Largent! Woo! He has good karma. Perfect redemption, that's so Yoda. Not only levels Harden, forces the fumble, and recovers it. Oh, I mean, Largent just unloaded on Mike Harden. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smoke, what a play! Steve will want to put that over his mantle, right, on oh, the fireplace. That's better than any touchdown catch he's ever made. If you've seen a movie and everything kind of fast forwards to that moment, and then all of a sudden it's in slow motion. They think he's a little guy, before does he pack a pop? Steve will want to put that over his mantle, right on oh, the fireplace. That's better than any touchdown catch he's ever made. <laughs> I've never seen Steve get up and talk smack to somebody, but he did that one. Paybacks are heck in this business. That was the play, I would say, is my favorite play of my NFL career, a tackle. Not a, not a catch. Best of all, his off-field charitable efforts earned Steve Largent the 1988 NFL Man of the Year Award. It wasn't just career catches, career yards, touchdown catches, all that kind of stuff. I mean, he had that long streak of consecutive receptions. Toppling records with each new year. Largent out wide to the right, back Craig, a quick pass. There it is. For Steve Largent, and at 7:07 here in the Great Northwest, this place will erupt. Um, there, you know, it goes into the most seasons with 50 catches. And Steve Largent's hands were good enough for a Hall of Fame career. Their success eventually vaulted Largent into the Hall of Fame. Mr. Seahawk retired with more catches, yards, and touchdowns than any receiver in NFL history. Well, I still feel like I'm uh, living in a dream a bit uh, when I think about my induction to the Hall of Fame. Largent was a model of consistency who held the career receptions, yardage, and touchdowns record at the time of his retirement. The former Seahawk posted eight 1,000-yard seasons despite playing through two strikes. Largent was named to the Hall of Fame's all-decade team of the 80s. I never really thought of myself as a Hall of Fame player and I never imagined that anything like that was even possible. But, uh, when I was inducted in the Hall of Fame, it was like a dream come true, and I still feel like I'm uh, living in the clouds a little bit. But by the time he retired, he had caught more passes than any receiver in the history of his league. As Logan 
goes in motion for the right. Great back to pass. Blitz coming. Great throw short. He's got a reception by Largent, who makes the catch. And now becomes the all-time career receiving leader. Steve Largent also became the NFL's all-time leader in receiving yardage. He continued to add to his record totals for career catches and extended his consecutive game receiving streak to 167. From big now, let's throw to the end zone. There it is. The touchdown Seahawks, number 100. He made it to seven Pro Bowls and was named to the 1980s All-Decade team. He had 819 catches for 13,089 yards and 100 touchdowns. But Zorn to Largent will be remembered for more than just numbers. Here's a couple guys that couldn't make it, got cut, and come to Seattle with an expansion team and were the reason that the Seahawks had the immediate success that they did. Records don't mean anything to Steve Largent. The thing that's going to mean something to Steve Largent is Steve will say to himself, I played the best I could play. There's been a lot of high points, and I've often said that, uh, you know, people talk about, well, Steve Largent never made it to the Super Bowl. Isn't that sad? And I really have no regrets about my career at all. It's, it's all been terrific. And he made plays for the Seahawks for so long. He makes the play. They've never had a receiver like him, and I don't know if they ever will have another receiver like a Steve Largent. I pinch myself every year just to see if it's really real, if it's happening to me, because believe me, the, the type of career that I've had is, is a childhood dream. Seahawks down 10 nothing. Cincinnati 10-yard line, best penetration, great back to pass, throw pump fit, now looks, throws to the end zone. There it is! It's touchdown Seahawks, number 100! By shattering the NFL record for touchdown catches, Steve Largent became the most prolific receiver in the history of pro football. Yet, with only weeks until his retirement, he used that moment to give rather than receive. Pete Gross, the Seahawks radio announcer, had been battling cancer for two years. And following the game, Largent presented him with his jersey as a symbol of friendship and support. For all fans, that single moment defined Steve Largent as a player and as a man, marking a graceful exit from this game. He is not only a Hall of Fame football player, he is a Hall of Fame human being, a Hall of Fame father, uh, a Hall of Fame husband. And these, I think, are the things that are important to Steve Largent as he goes through life. People will remember him for his football here in the Seattle area, but I think even more remember him as a human being. Largent, Largent. Honors and adulation mark Steve Largent's road to the Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, the last original season, number eight. When I come out of the tunnel the last time, it's going to be an emotional time, I'm sure. And I think that I'm going to be just like a sponge, just trying to soak up the whole event and just catalog it and, and remember it as clearly as I possibly can for the rest of my life. Uh, because the memories from the game are great ones. It's been like a dream to me.